hosted a startup weekend last year in April, and David came in, um, joined up with the team, met these folks kind of at random, but found that he was super passionate about this this uh, big problem. And at the time, he was he was still in school, and throughout that time last year, going to class, managing. Uh, his life as a student, um, he still managed to continue bootstrapping his startup and making an impact um, for his customers. And I can't wait to hear his story because uh, I've seen him, I've been able to see him grow. And I, I'm excited for you guys to hear his story about how he's gone from that um, to what he's working on now. So without further ado, David. So yeah, thank you, Jordan, and thank you, um, Dale. I'll try and kind of pick off a little bit um, from the kind of things we were talking about. So what Acorn, all is, Acorn Hours is all about is growing service communities. So um, like you were saying, what, how we can get people involved in doing service and learning at the same time. So uh, what Acorn Hours does is it grows student service networks. So if you think about Facebook, and you have your connections between your friends and your family, and Facebook has mapped those connections onto an online um, network, and you can do all kinds of amazing things with that data once it's online, like connecting with people wherever you are. So with Acorn Hours, we map the connections between students, schools, and nonprofits, and then once we have those connections online, we can tell better stories of students' public service. So what we do is we've set up the simplest way for schools to track and verify their public service hours. Um, so we have, when especially small private high schools is where we're starting. So small private high schools will require, let's say, 100 hours a year um, for every graduating senior to do. They need to keep track of all that data. So on the one hand, we are helping them from an administrative side, and we're helping them track all of that data. And on the other hand, um, we're helping take that data and put it into profiles that the students can share. And the end result of this that we really want is students to be engaged in better service and to have an be able to have an image of themselves as a, as a server in the world um, and so that they will continue that service uh, going forward. The business model that we use, we sell a yearly subscription to schools to help them solve their administrative problem. Um, and so we, when in talking to schools, we've gone out and talked to several hundred schools and they really obviously hate the paperwork side of things and they, their students are getting to the end of college or the end of high school and they have no record of their service to share. So this, uh, why we got involved in this in the first place. Um, when I, before I came to Hendricks, um, which I just graduated from on Saturday, um, <laughs> thanks. Um, before I came to Hendricks, I was uh, a city year core member in Chicago. And in that role in Chicago, I was teaching third grade students and I was doing after school programs and uh, working with middle schoolers on the weekends. This was a hugely transformative experience for me and learning about the problems of poverty, kind of getting out of the, the bubble like you were talking about. And before that in high school, um, I did a lot of tutoring with ESL students and this is where I really found the problem of uh, keeping track of this paperwork and that being a real struggle. So uh, when Startup Weekend came up a year ago, um, Chad from Noble Impact pitched the idea of an app that could tell better stories of public service. And then we kind of combined that with this idea to do uh, better paperwork tracking. And uh, that's, that's kind of uh, what Acorn Hours has become. So I'd like to talk about um, kind of three things that I've pulled from this experience. Um, and the first one is running a startup in college. And it's been said before that doing a startup is like taking all the pieces of an airplane and throwing them off a cliff and trying to reassemble them before you hit the ground. And uh, doing a startup in college is like taking all the pieces of an airplane and throwing them off the cliff and trying to reassemble them before they hit the ground. And you have professors throwing books at you the whole way down. So it's very, <laughs> it's kind of a different set of, set of problems. But um, it was a wonderful experience starting up in college. Um, the positives that I had was there was really no risk to what I was doing. I have no mortgage, I have no kids, I have no job. So it was, we were really able to experiment a lot and learn a lot and say every day I have no idea what I'm doing and that was okay. Um, and learn through that uh, experience. We also had a lot of resources around us. We had printers, we had rooms to work in, we had 3D printers at Hendrix. We had all these awesome resources at the school for us to use. Um, and finally we just had all of our talented young friends around us who could help us out a lot. So. 
Um, I say all of this to say that if you, uh, I think there is a lot of room in, in our community for more students to be getting involved in actually running real businesses that are selling to customers and generating revenue. Um, the negative side of working in college was just the combination of social life and school work and the startup work. It, it was a lot to balance. I, I know a couple weeks ago we emailed maybe 200 schools in a couple weeks um, trying to, to sell to them and there was this huge amount of work. We were really excited about sales and then finals came and all of that just um, had to stop all of a sudden. Um, the other thing I want to talk about is uh, we used an international development team to build our so I am a, a philosophy and business major. Uh, my partner, Shreesh, is a uh, biochemistry major. And our third uh, team member is in the back, is Scott, um, who is our technical co-founder. And so we didn't really have, uh, Scott has a full-time job and uh, four kids. So um, he wasn't able to really build the app. So I think what we did, which was a really good idea, and if you're looking to build an app, um, this worked really well for us, was having one technical person who managed all the code and then we used a designer in Lithuania who was awesome, awesome, and a developer in India who was terrible, and that turned into a developer in Italy who was awesome. Um, but there's a learning process there, um, and I can answer those. If you guys have questions about that, we can talk more. Um, and the third thing has been the Arkansas startup community. Um, we like to claim the title as the first startup to come out of the new um, Arkansas startup ecosystem. It was uh, Lee's organization of Think Big Arkansas, the Startup Arkansas event where I first got involved in, uh, in uh, got excited about entrepreneurship. It was Jordan's organization of Startup Weekend that started the business. It's been the Venture Center and the Innovation Hub and Warwick Saban and all these amazing people that have uh, mentored us and these programs that have come together in the past five years. It really is working. It worked um, for us and we're excited to see it build out. But the Arkansas startup ecosystem has been um, really great for us. So in the past year, we have built out our MVP. Um, we have a working version of the product. Students can track their service hours, log their experience, upload photos. We verify all that information with nonprofits. Uh, we tested with Mount St. Mary High School and Conway High School the past semester. And uh, we're so right now selling schools is our main push. So we're probably going to work with um, 10 to 20 schools in the next, uh, in the next year going forward, which uh, will give us enough revenue. To, um, to support innovation and, and keep building our product out. So that is uh, what we've been doing, and I'd love to hear any questions that you guys have. All right, I know we have lots of questions, so who's first? Anyone? Keenan? All right, Keenan Abner again. Uh, David, I know we've, we've mm. you know, worked in the same time. We were both in Conway and uh, being students that just recently graduated. Um, from your perspective, what, was, what were some of the, the real obstacles uh, for students coming out of school trying to do startups? And what, what do you think we need most uh, moving forward for students in that situation? So I would just warn students. I think that the negative, one of the things I, I didn't say was I think there really is a negative to doing a startup in college. I think it did kind of take away from my educational experience um, in the past year. So I'm not the kind of person that thinks college needs to be thrown out of the window. Um, I think that it's a really important um, experience in our culture. So that, that is a danger that you might be losing some of that educational experience. But the obstacles is just time management. It's hard that none of your friends are doing something like this. And hopefully in five years, lots of Arkansas college students will be doing um, this kind of thing. But um, yeah, it's, it's hard to be the one guy who's, oh, you're starting a business. Nobody takes you seriously. You know, like that, there's a kind of social, emotional side, and there's a time management side of you have tons. Like being a student is hard work. Um, and then you also have to balance customers calling you and saying you, you haven't emailed me back. So it's, it's tough, yeah. Opportunities to work your business into your coursework, so that you could get credit for the time you're spending on your business. Um, Shreesh did. He uh, Shreesh couldn't be here today, um, but Shreesh uh, did a marketing class that he did an independent study um, where he was doing social media marketing. Um, I didn't really integrate it directly into my classes, uh, but you know, I was using, I have a business minor, so it was really using those basic accounting skills, those basic um, business law, things like that, were extremely helpful. And I think that that is 
I think if you take a, a sophomore in college and you put them in an accounting class, then they learn it for a semester, they're going to forget it in a, in a year. But if you take them and put them in an accounting class and then you set them up on QuickBooks and they're actually running their accounting system, they're going to remember that for, for a lot longer. So it gives you a chance to apply all those things that seem kind of meaningless in business classes. Glenna Cook, what do you think, being a student, what can we do that would help others even get an idea that this might be a possibility for them in their lives? Um, I think it's, it's about, well, fortunately there are so many, this is a story we know, you know, someone has idea, starts it up in their dorm room. This is something that um, has a lot of national attention. But um, I think just telling stories, the doing things like this, there's, you know, where are the college students here? You know, so I think doing events um, like this where my moment of saying startups are cool to saying I want to do a startup was at Think Big Arkansas. And I was listening to um, one of the speakers talking and just thinking, oh, I can do that. So that's the kind of thing that, that we need to encourage, um, that we need to encourage. Oh. Um, more is just uh, getting people to think that they can do it, and once they can, students want to work in the space. They just don't see the possibility, I think. Hi, my name is Josiah Brand, and I'm a student at UALR, awesome. and uh, I'm helping, uh, I work for the Fund for Arkansas's Future, awesome. and so one of the great things that I've been trying to do at UALR is help facilitate that community, and that there is opportunities here in Arkansas, mm -hmm. and we've really got a great community here, especially in Little Rock, to help facilitate that, and um, creating, helping curate those stories and help uh, let people know that there are opportunities and that people just like you are doing things during school is one of the things that we've really found that's important. Um, but my question is, uh, what is something, advice that you would give to a college student that is trying to start something? That there's so many difficulties and barriers to do that, but what is the one thing of advice that you've found in the past year of doing this? That there's no reason not to. I mean, I think that if, I think that maybe people might be scared of the social consequence of failure, which is a real kind of emotional response to that. But I think that just getting out there and building something, even if it's not exactly what you want it to be, and even if you work on it for two months and then stop, just getting out there and starting um, is the first step, and, and it's really helpful. I also think if you think about the amount of money that you're spending on college, um, if you took you know, the amount of money you're spending on one class and put that into your business, um, you're going to get a whole lot more out, out of that. So thinking of it not, oh, I'm going to put money into this business and I'm going to lose it, you wouldn't think that with a class. If you paid money for a class and you didn't get any money back, you'd say, well, I paid for a class. So saying, like, this is an educational opportunity in itself and it's worth putting a little bit of money into. David, I'm Paul Sage. I'm a marketing consultant and writer. I have a company called Sage Advice. And I also am the parent of three kids who have gone through this Mount St. Mary Catholic High awesome. system. So I definitely understand the need for your product. Yeah, because yeah. it's the night before the hours are due and the mm -hmm. kid's trying to find the notebook where he wrote down his hours. And really, I think you've taken something that is needed in families and, have, and I'm sure there's a lot more to the product that you haven't described. Um, Clearly, I understand the, the private schools because they push the service hours. I really don't understand the, the potential in public schools, but what's your vision going forward of how many schools and how you build this out, and is this statewide, is this regional? Where does it go from here? Yeah, so we want, um, we want every student in the world um, logging service hours. Um, but really, what we're starting here is we want to focus really, really narrowly, because we have so few resources, we want to focus really narrowly and do an amazing job, small private high schools that require public service. Eventually, the way I envision the product working is tracking all learning that happens outside of the classroom. So if um, you have an intern that's working at a, your company who's a high school student, they're not getting class credit for that. But when they apply to college, do they have a record? And is it verified? Is every hour that they served with you, are there pictures of what they did? Are there descriptions? Are there recommendations that you've written to that person? So I really, that's kind of where it's headed. Um, we can also see this expanding to corporations, um, telling their stories of public service. We can see this going to nonprofits. There's lots of different um, verticals of people that are doing public service that need to um, 
keep track of that data and tell those stories. So that we kind of have a very broad vision, but we want to do an amazing job um, uh, with this one uh, market first. So that's where we see it going. Hey, I just, uh, just extending from that, um, have you looked at the National Honor, Serv um, Honor Society? Because that's a nationwide mm -hmm. for all schools, and you have to have so many hours. Yeah, so we're, uh, we're going to be trying to partner with, with them and the Beta Club and um, all these different service, national service organizations. Um, we, we'd like those to, to be our partners. I have a question. Yes. Uh, Jordan with the Little Rock Chamber. <clears throat> so you mentioned that there was little risk for you to jump out and try and do this while you were in school. But you just graduated last week, and now you're facing you know, the open world where you're doing your own thing. How do you see yourself tackling those problems like you know, not depending on your, your um, student resources like that you mentioned and moving forward? What are some things that you're going to be doing to tackle that? Um, I mean, I think that the reason that I'm not looking for a job and trying to do this part time is I think that my student loans are, I need to start paying those in six months. So like I have this six months where I can, we have enough money to support me for a little while. Um, and this is going to kind of force me, I think, that I need to make 20 sales by the end of the summer. And if I don't, then I need to go get a job at a company that I don't care about as much as Acorn Hours. So it's intentionally putting pressure on myself. Um, I mean, intentionally putting pressure on myself to saying I either succeed or I don't get to realize um, this dream. So that's why I'm doing it. Um, but I also think, you know, if I do this for six months and it doesn't work out and I need to go get a job, I'm still 23 and I can go and do something else. So I think that there's still quite low risk for me. John Chamberlain. Uh, I think you're, you're, are you also looking at venture capital? Uh, not, we want to get Bones more or, traction, yeah. But I, yeah. I, like Kiva Zip, was that one of the ones that's on your? Yeah, we're applying uh, tomorrow, so <laughs> that's, uh, and, and it's almost then, done. And then the, the accelerator? Yeah, the ARC Challenge, we're going to be applying to the ARC Challenge in the fall. Okay, um, so again, part of the ecosystem yeah. and the Kiva Zip is microcredit, yeah. which we heard about last week. So using that ecosystem to support us, um, yeah. Any other questions? All right. Well, like we did with uh, Dale, we're, we're going to ask David what we can do to help grow Acorn Hours and um, how our community can support everything that he's doing. Um, so the wealthy investors can meet me um, over here. Um, the, no, the, the biggest thing that I need probably from this group is uh, sales mentorship and technical mentorship. So if uh, you are willing to have a cup of West Rock coffee with me and, um, and talk a little bit about sales, uh, that's, it's just something that you need to learn through experienced people. So yeah, it, it would be extremely helpful if, if I could get that mentorship. Also, uh, if there's any... Um if there's anybody in the crowd that has connections with a decision maker at a school, um, I'm sure that he would love to talk to you about that as well. Um, yeah, one more question. I, yeah. I guess the comment, when, when you're up on Kiva Zip, mm -hmm. if you let this network know, then yes. we can all be, uh, loan you $25. And yeah. If, uh, yeah, so if you don't know Kiva Zip, uh, it's a 0% um, percent loan um, that's given to small businesses. So we are going to be submitting our application for uh, $5,000 to build our mobile app. So we have our web application, but we'd like to build uh, the mobile side of things. So that's going to be up um, in the next week. And um, we can share that out through Twitter and AR idea. And so if you're following that, um, if you would uh, consider contributing to that, it would uh, be really helpful to us. And all of you who registered to attend will send an email um, notification on um, how we can help that through the Kiva and then also if there's anything with uh, Bridge Rwanda we can follow up with. Um, give it up for, for David. <laughs> Y'all, don't forget, um, we've had some awesome Twitter conversations going on this morning um, throughout the event, but continue the buzz. Um, stay caffeinated throughout the day, and <laughs> let's, let's, uh, let's keep it going. We're going <laughs> to pass around a sign-up sheet. Um, real quick before you guys leave because if you sign up and we have you down for every week um, or up to 10 weeks, um, we're going to give you guys uh, some, some awesome uh, 
some one million cup swag, some maybe a t-shirt or a coffee cup. Um, next week, um, we're working on a couple of presenters. Um, we'll have the, the information about them shortly, probably by the end of the day. Um, so please come back next week, bring friends, um, and tell them whenever we get you uh, the information about those presenters. Um, thanks, guys. And drink some more coffee.